Now, Howard, tell them what else Mr. Cates uh, said to you in the classroom. Well, he said at first, the earth was too hot for any life. Uh, and then it cooled down a mite, and cells and things begun to live. Cells? Little bugs, like, in the water. Yeah, after that, the little bugs got to be bigger bugs, and they uh, sprouted legs and crawled up on the land. And how long did this take, according to Mr. Cates? A couple million years, maybe longer. Right there, uh, gentlemen. Then come the fishes and the reptiles and the mammals. Man's a mammal. Along with the dogs Baltimore and the cattle in the fields. Did he say that? Yes, sir. Now, Howard, how did man come out of this slimy mess of bugs and serpents, according to your professor? Man was sort of evoluted from the old world monkeys. <laughs> Did you hear that, my friends? Old world monkeys. According to Mr. Cates, you and I are not even descended from good American monkeys. <laughs> now, Howard, listen carefully now. All this talk of bugs and evolution of slime and ooze, did Mr. Cates ever make any reference to God? Not as I remember. And the miracle he achieved in seven days, as described in the beautiful book of Genesis? No, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I... Objection. I ask that the court please advise the learned counsel that this is not a Chautauqua tent. He is supposed to be submitting evidence to a jury. And there are no ladies on the jury. Your Honor, I have no intention of making a speech. There is no need. I'm sure that everyone on the jury, everyone within the sound of this boy's voice has been moved by his tragic confusion. He has been taught that he wriggled up like an animal out of the filth and the muck below. I tell you, these Bible haters, these evolutionists are brewers of poison. And the legislature of this sovereign state has had the wisdom to demand that the peddlers of poison, be it in bottles or in books, clearly label the product they attempt to sell. If this law is not upheld, this boy will find himself one of a generation shorn of its faith by the teachings of godless science. But if the full penalty of the law is meted out to Bertram Cates, the faithful all over the world who are watching us and listening to our every word will rise up and call this courtroom blessed. Amen. Boy, I am glad that Colonel Brady didn't make a speech. Now, oh, Howard, I heard you say the world used to be pretty hot. That's what Mr. Kate said. You think it could have been any hotter than it is now? <laughs> Must have been. Mr. Cates read it to us from a book. Is this the book, Charles Darwin's Origin of Species? Yes, sir. Now, Howard. You think there was anything wrong with that? Well, I don't know. I... Objection, Your Honor. The defense is asking that a high school boy hand down an opinion on a question of morality. I am trying to establish, sir, that Howard or Colonel Brady, Charles Darwin, anyone in this courtroom, or you, sir, has the right to think. Mr. Drummond, the right to think is not on trial here. With all respect to the bench, sir, I say that the right to think is very much on trial. It is fearfully in danger in the proceedings of this court. A man is on trial. A thinking man. And he is threatened with fine and imprisonment for choosing to speak what he thinks. Mr. Drummond, will you please rephrase your question? Oh. All right, Howard, let's put it this way. Um, with all this fuss and feathers about evolution, uh, you think it hurt you? Sir? Harm you in any way? I mean, you seem reasonably fit, you know. Did what Mr. Cates told you uh, affect your ball game at all? Or did it injure your uh, pitching arm? No, sir. I'm a lefty. Oh, you're southpaw. Oh, yes. wow. Well. 
And you still honor your father and mother? Sure. Haven't murdered anybody since breakfast. Objection. That is an absurd piece of jack A what? Would you rephrase your objection, Mr. Davenport? jack a false claim in this instance as to the murder of known or unknown persons. Objection sustained. Ask him if his faith in the Holy Scriptures has been shattered. When I need your valuable help, Colonel Brady, you can rest assured I shall humbly ask for it. Any time, Colonel Drummond, any time. He's the only man I've ever known who can strut sitting down. You believe everything that Mr. Cates told you? I'm not sure. I gotta think it over. Well, good for you. Your father's a farmer, isn't he? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, you got a tractor? Brand new one. Uh, you figure a tractor's sinful because it's not mentioned in the Bible? Oh. You know, Moses never made a phone call. Does that make the telephone an instrument of the devil? I never thought of it that way. Neither did anybody else, according to Brady. Your Honor, the defense makes the same old error of all godless men. They confuse material things with the great spiritual realities of the revealed word. Why do you bewilder this boy? Does right have no meaning to you, sir? At the risk of prejudicing the case of my client, I must tell you that right has absolutely no meaning to me whatsoever. Truth has meaning as a direction, gentlemen. But one of the peculiar imbecilities of our time is the grid of morality we have placed on human behavior. So that every act of man must be measured against an arbitrary latitude of right and the longitude of wrong in exact minutes, seconds, and degrees. You understand what I'm talking about, Howard? No, sir. Well, maybe someday you will. You're excused, son. This boy may not understand, but I do. I've seen what you can do to a jury, twisting and tangling them. No one's forgotten the Endicott publishing case, where you made the jury believe that the obscenity was in their own minds. It was immoral what you did to that jury. Tricking them. Judgment of confusion. You think you can get away with that here? I'm not trying to get away with anything, Counselor. All I want to do is prevent the clock stoppers from dumping a lot of medieval garbage into the United States Constitution. This is not a federal court. Well, damn it, you got to stop him somewhere. Your Honor, it's obvious what he's trying to do. He's trying to make us forget the lawbreaker and put the law on trial. Well, we have the answer for you, sir, in our next witness. Will you please call Miss Rachel Brown to the stand? You know about this? Miss Rachel Brown? Will Miss Rachel Brown come to the witness stand? My dear, just repeat some of the things you told me last night. Rachel, what did you tell him? Take it easy, take it easy. Raise your right hand, Rachel. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes. Be seated. Miss Brown, you're an old friend of the defendant, Bertram Kitt. Yes. We're engaged to be married. Do you attend the same church? Yes, we did. Do you now? What? Attend the same church. No. Did Mr. Cates leave the church? No, not really. Not the spirit of it. But the body of it, correct? Mr. Cates left the church that you and he once attended together. Yes. Why? Because of what happened to the Stebbins boy. Stebbins boy. Would you tell us about that, please? It was two summers ago. The little Stebbins boy was just 13 years old. He was one of Bert's students. He used to come over to look through Bert's microscope. Bert said he had a quick mind and he might even be a scientist when he grew up. Yes. One day he went swimming in the river with the other boys. He got a cramp and drowned. Go on. At the funeral, 
Paul preached that Tommy didn't die in a state of grace because his father wouldn't allow him to be baptized. Why don't you tell them what your father really said? That Tommy's soul was damned. Order. Fighting in hellfire. Religion is supposed to comfort Order. Him, isn't it? It's not supposed to frighten him to death. We will have order, please. Don't you see? He felt it wasn't fair that a child could not go to heaven. It wasn't God he abandoned. It was only the church. Well, it is true, then, that because of what happened to the Stebbins boy, Bertram Cates left the church. You said nothing wrong. We're merely beginning to get some insight into the experiences that sometimes can lead a young man astray. I object. Whether or not my client went astray is a matter of interpretation. Strike it from the record. Objection sustained. The jury is directed to disregard the remarks of counsel. Ms. Brown, will you tell the jury some more of Mr. Cates's opinions on the subject of religion? Objection. Objection. Hearsay testimony is not admissible. The court has no objection to this line of questioning. Proceed, Colonel Brady. Just repeat in your own words some of the conversations you've had with the defendant. Rachel, you can't. Order. The things that I said to you are questions, questions that you asked your own heart. If you say those things out loud, he'll make them sound like Order. answers. Order. Crucify me. You won't hurt him, Rachel. This is for his good. Speak up. Mr. Brady, please, I confided in you. Rachel, we are here to serve the truth. I, I can't remember. May I remind you, Miss Brown, that you're testifying under oath, and it's unlawful to withhold pertinent information. Just tell the court your innermost feelings when Bertram Cates said to you, God did not create man, man created God. Bert didn't say that. Please, he was just bitter because of the Steppens boy. He said man created a vengeful God out of his own bigotry and the devil out of his own hell. And when he was wondering what was on the other side of the moon, did he ever once mention the possibility of heaven? Do you ever mention that? Or did he say that there was nothing except a world of stars and moons and galaxies and universal dust? Tell us, what did he say about the holy state of matrimony? Did he compare it with the breeding of animals? Yeah, objection! Come on. Objection! Oh, oh, don't you? You want the good people of this town to understand what happened to his mind so that they can bring him back to his senses, don't you? Come on, tell it! Tell it! Order! Tell it all! Order! It was Merit. Order! Order! Under the circumstances, I believe the witness should be excused. And will the defense have no chance to challenge the statements that the prosecutor has put into the mouth of the witness? Let her go. You've got to. I've got to what? Let you go to jail? Now stop tying my hands. Let her go, or I'll change my plea to guilty. No questions. For the time being, the witness is excused. Does the prosecution wish to call any further witnesses? Uh, not at the present time, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. We shall proceed.